So I have a page um, that I made on uh, Vimeo to upload some of the videos that uh, Facebook always flags down um, so I could share. Uh, this one I want you to check out if you can because uh, it reminds me of the Georgia Guidestones. When uh, one night I was talking to Vince and uh, I brought the Georgia Guidestones and uh, we started looking at it together. And <laughs> it's some of the simplest stuff, uh, you know, it flies over my head. So I'll, it's one of the reasons I'll, I, I cherish talking to him because, you know, he puts it on point um, as far as, you know, seeing the obvious and then taking the obvious and expounding upon that and growing. And uh, I was looking at the Georgia Guidestones. It was crazy because it has all these languages it's written in. I think it was eight. But uh, one of the ones we seen on there was... Um, uh, well, two of the ones that stood out was, uh, what was it? Swahili. And uh, Swahili has always been interesting to me because Swahili seems to be a bunch of tribes that were placed in Africa and they came together and made a nation. Um, and again, when I go through that um, Muskogee Creek Dictionary and I'm trying to learn the words... Um, whenever I take the words and put them into Google Translate to try to get the pronunciation, Swahili, Mali, and there was another one, are always the, I just can't think of the name of it, are always the groups that, outside of uh, an English translation, they give me, uh, Google tries to say, oh, no, no, you're, you're looking, you're trying to pronounce it uh, in these languages, in, in this tongue, in this way. So I always think that's interesting. Like, uh, oh, remember Chata? I learned that word from uh, when I was watching one of um, uh, War Horse's videos. She's like, uh, we're not Choctaw, we're Chata. And I was talking to Vince about that as well. And Vince is like, there was a there was a road sign, a, a billboard um, in Oklahoma. And it said Choctaw, made in the spirit of Chata. And, uh, you know, I even spelled it to him, C-H-A-T-A. -A. And he's like, yeah, it was on the sign. Well, in Nigeria, you have a, um, a, a music um, producer named Young Chata. And I'm like, there, there it is again, you know, the connection right back there. So I've been trying to figure out what does Chata mean in, in the Nigerian language, which um, is interesting uh, nonetheless. But uh, yeah, but getting back to the Georgia Guidestones, as I'm watching this video and I'm explaining, you know, what I'm seeing. You know, Vincent points out, you know, look at the languages. It's telling all those that speak these languages, those leaders, you know, do follow these guidelines while you're ruling over these people. So while you see the English speaking languages, the Russian, the modern Chinese, you also see, you know, these um, um, Swahili and... Um, what was the other one, Swahili? Oh, we'll look it up. But you'll, you'll see those, and it's like, okay, so they're not absolved from it. They're doing it to their, their own people, too. This is melanated people doing it to melanated people. So, if you get, I'm going to leave the link in the description box, and um, so you'll be able to get to it. But watch this, because it, <laughs> it revolves around Jesse Ventura. And I feel stupid, because I used to watch his show, but I gave up on watching it, because I'm like, man, this guy is not giving me anything... I, I don't already know, you know, this is like cream puff stuff, like this is stuff that, you know, a YouTuber has already found or it's already been written about in books, you know, he goes in and tries to see Harp and of course they're denied, it's kind of like those Bigfoot shows, right, where they drag you along, oh, we're going to find Bigfoot, we're on the hunt for Bigfoot, we hear the sounds for Bigfoot, and they never produce a Bigfoot, <laughs> you know, and I have a theory, I think the Bigfoots, I think the Bigfoots are demons, but I get that theory from the Quran. And um, now in the Quran, if you were going to go through mountains or you wanted to journey through a mountain range, uh, the Quran says you have to ask the demon of that mountain permission to pass through. And that's where it started dinging in my head, you know, hey, maybe these are demons. That's why they vanish and nobody can find a trace of them. You find footsteps and then all of a sudden they just disappear, you know, <laughs> that maybe these are the demons that, that they talked about in the Quran. This is just a thought, you know. Um, and I might be wrong. I, there's a good chance I could be wrong, you know. Um, but anyways, 
Well, let's get to the Georgia Guidestones. So here we're on the Georgia Guidestone page, and that's one of the things I thought was interesting. I am Isis, goddess of love. Huh. The moon goddess, right? Where's the languages, though? There they are. English, Spanish, Swahili, Hindu, Hebrew, Arabic, and traditional Chinese, and Russian. So, like Vincent was pointing out to me, all these nations are all involved in making sure they follow these <laughs> ten, <laughs> their ten commandments, right? Isn't that something, huh? I never even noticed that it was the number ten. I thought there was a lot more than that. So, um, and there was something else. I was looking into more into that uh, statue of that African they built. I want to point something out. And here it is. The part here where Drew inspired, Drew insp inspiration for the ancient Greek temple of Zeus and African religions. This is where these uh, inspiration for his uh, statue came from. And I'm like, you know, you know, Vince is always talking to me about the uh, the black colleges, those uh, black um, historical colleges, and, and how they uh, there's something behind them, there's something to them about, uh, you know, the insurrections are going on, they're taking over our stuff, they're kicking, you know, melanated people out of office and, and governments and Congress, and telling them you have an out, you know, you you know, you stay here, you're here the next day, we'll kill you. You know, uh, chasing them out of their own cities that they built and, gov and governed and ran. And uh, the black historical colleges, a lot of them never were touched. They weren't burnt down. They weren't molested in any way. How can those things stand during the time of insurrections? You know, and you guys probably have lots of stories. You can believe in, even leave them in the comments. Like about um, just the, the, the connections to HBCU grads. In like your local towns, you know, like like uh, Atlanta, you know, certain people with certain last names that have went to those schools, you know, they can get cops fired and in, and in, in over the weekend in a matter, of, excuse me, in a matter of 24 hours. Uh, I was listening to a guy that was explaining some of the uh, um, history to some of these uh, famous last names in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and how you just don't mess with their kids, you don't mess with their families. You know, and everybody knows it. I think one was Jackson, and, uh, you know, he was basically just talking about HBCUs and his experience, you know, going there, a kid from, you know, growing up in Texas and then moving to Atlanta and, uh, you know, learning how to fit in. And he just said it was a, it, the city's just run different there, you know. I mean, you know, it's interesting to me because I, I didn't grow up in that environment, obviously, you know. I grew up in, uh, in Pelzer, South Carolina, you know, after moving from Florida and, uh, you know, it's a small town in small town people, you know, and it's just, you know, just to hear the workings of, you know, no, there's melanated people that have elite power, you know, and uh, it's like I, I've never seen that in my whole entire life. Not saying it's not real, but it's like that's crazy. And then just to hear Vincent explain to me about these HBCUs and there's something to them and pay attention to them. You know, Colin Kaepernick, he's a he Vincent showed me, you know, he's a he's a. Um, a fraternity brother and how the you know they even wrote a letter to the nfl you know and roger goodell and stuff like that you know i was like this is crazy so yeah i just thought it was interesting because i'm like there it is that's that's the dead giveaway the inspiration for this was the ancient greek temples of zeus and african religions so somewhere in those in the, one of these african religions is going to be the dead giveaway the connection that the whatever these tribes are sitting in africa are not just African tribes. They were the ancient Greeks, and they know it, you know, and they have the proof to back it up. So, and then it just makes you think about Zeus, right? And the whole story about Zeus and um, was it Europa, the the mother of uh, of Europe, in that whole story, you know, Zeus was supposed to have came down and swooped her up and took her to Europe, you know. Um, they they go back and forth, you know, whether she was Phoenician or not, you know. Or Ethiopian, you know, but either way, I mean, you think about the um, the uh, Phoenicians. Phoenician, they said it, it, that was a Greek word meaning purple. Well, there's only 
<laughs> there's only one group of people that walk around here that are known for being purple, and that's still melanated people. You know, they try to give you that, oh, well, they, they were the ones that dabbled in purple dye, and so on and so forth. Well, I'm pretty sure if we, you know, look, you know, throughout history, we'll find the Egyptians probably could uh, did this and the uh, Babylonians that did this. So, you know, I just don't buy that whole, you know, narrative that, oh, they brought purple, uh, you know, dyed clothes. And that's why they call them the purple people. No, no, no. We talk, we, we, when you see someone that's so dark, you know, you, you've heard them mention, called that they were purple. You know, I mean, purple is what? Another shade of, uh, of uh, a lighter shade of what black or what you would call black, right? Um, so I just don't buy that. Like look at the people of the Adamans Islands. You call those people purple, you know. But in today's society, today's society, if you're talking to somebody that's you know in that's been brainwashed to think black and white, everything's black and white, then yeah, they'll call them black. But you know, you know the old folks, they they wouldn't they wouldn't know what that is. So yeah, just just check this out.